One of the hardest parts about YouTube can be standing out. Why should anybody watch your videos over the millions of other ones available? Often we try our hardest to stick to a genre, to occupy a category that others have succeeded at in hopes that we can do the same. But there's a problem with this strategy. While doing what's tried and true means you're playing it safe, it also means you may not stand out. Today, we're going to look at someone who took the safe route while also innovating like crazy. She combined two popular genres that have nothing to do with each other into a successful, mesmerizing show. Our focus for this episode is none other than Bailey Sarian, merger of the true crime and makeup genres, a feat nobody knew was possible until it happened. Augie, are you ready to dive into this weird, weird world? I am. Let's do this. Let's do it! So, Bailey Sarian. She is fascinating to me. Her channel started out with mostly makeup videos, and she had some vlogs, and that content did pretty well. Uh, she even has videos from like five years ago about her eighth grade diary. You know, she would talk about things she wrote about in eighth grade. And uh, her audience with all this was quite loyal. Uh, most of her videos would get around 100,000, give or take. And uh, th that's already really good. It wasn't until 2019 that she started releasing content that was makeup and murder mysteries and dark history. And so she essentially does her makeup while <laughs> talking about these really dark weird, fascinating topics. And I, I think one reason this works so well is when she's doing her makeup and talking about these dark things, it kind of, like, it it raises the mood, you know? Uh, I don't know if you've ever watched, like, serial killer documentaries, but they, they kind of bum me out. Uh, <laughs> do, do they bum you out, Augie? They can be kind of a lot. Yeah, it just kind of makes me wonder, like, wow, there's people out there that actually are like this in the world. So, um, yeah, definitely some negative vibes sometimes. Yeah, for real. And she, like, her presentation itself is very, uh, like, casual, you know? Uh, she clearly knows what she's talking about, but she's not trying super hard to be, you know, some authoritative voice. She's just kind of being herself, and she's adding a very human, relaxed element to all this, which I think is super important. Uh, you know, we talk a lot about numbers on this show, and obviously numbers are super important and like, strategies, but also just, like, uh, again, having a great idea for a show, you know, taking an already popular genre, murder mysteries, and then kind of taking the edge off, <laughs> um, I, I think is a, a great idea. And she's probably not the first to do this, but she is the first to combine makeup and murder mysteries, which I think is huge. Like, so, uh, Augie, you're, you're married. Does your wife, is she into murder mysteries, uh, or, or makeup? Because I know lots of women who love both. Um, I, I don't know about this crossover, but, uh, yeah, what's your experience with this? Yeah, I mean, my wife loves murder mysteries. She watches Dateline, and she actually likes to, like, fall asleep to them. So she'll, like, put it on the iPhone or the iPad, laying in bed, and fall asleep to just listening to these, these different murder mysteries. So... Um, yeah, I mean, I think, I think it's a popular genre and in the makeup genre too, right. Is it goes hand in hand because, you know, not to stereotype, but maybe you can say, you know, a lot of women like murder mysteries and of course women like makeup tutorials as well too. So they, they go together. And one of the cool things I think that you might not have mentioned is that, you know, what does YouTube want? What does the algorithm want? We talk about it all the time. It's it's the watch time, right? They want you to keep watching. And, you know, watching a makeup tutorial or really any tutorial in general, it can get boring, right? I mean, you're just delivering the content. It's educational. Okay, you're learning. But it's kind of boring. It's always this, it's a little stale. And by telling a story, a murder mystery, that's going to keep people watching. So, you, you know, stories keep people watching because you want to know how they end and you want to know what happens next. Um, so it's just a it's a really smart idea. And I think anybody out there that creates educational content or tutorial type contents, you know, think about, you know, how can I incorporate a story when she's using murder mysteries, obviously, to 
to keep viewers watching. So I think that's a it's a pretty interesting thing. And I, I maybe as as YouTube evolves, right? Right now, everybody niche down. You got to niche down. But as as content keep, continues to get better and better and better, um, we might start seeing this happen a lot more often. Yeah, totally. Like uh, as people start innovating more and more, I think genres are going to start colliding more. Uh, you know, like even in the last 10 years, the historical fiction genre is huge thanks to Game of Thrones, you know. Uh, and I think usually th these things didn't really go together very much before. Um, okay, so one thing I want to really hit on is her numbers now. And uh, it's it's always good to dive into numbers uh, just to quantify exactly how well this is all working for Bailey. So her lifetime subscribers are 6.2 million, which is crazy. Her lifetime views are 740 million. 740 million. Oh my god. Uh, her views in the last six months, 126 million. And her subscribers in the last six months was about 700,000. Um, I mean, this is just, these numbers are crazy. Like, so how, I'm just curious, Augie, how much do you think happened in the last, like, two years for her? Uh, versus, like, she, so she was on YouTube for about five years total. And then she started her makeup murder content uh, about two, three years ago. Uh, like, I mean, you're looking at the graph right now. What do you think? <laughs> you can totally see. I mean, so if we went through all of her videos, we don't need to do that right now, but if we went and sorted through them and looked at, you know, this date right here, the date that I'm looking at is uh, April of 2020. She got 8.4 million views, pretty good. Um, but you know, those months around there, she's getting like, you know, f you know, 3 million to 8 million views. And whatever happened in that month of, of May 2020, so a month later, right? We said she got 8.4. She was getting about 3 to 8 million views. Whatever happened right there, whatever type of content, you could look through her videos and click through them and look at all the dates and stuff, uh, skyrocketed her channel. Her, her channel is, you know, now doing, you know, in just two months after that in July, so we just talked about May, in July of 2020, she got 33 million. So you go from three million, six, you know, one one year later, let's just say, you're at thirty three million, and she her, her best month, uh, you know, in the past year or two was forty two million views in a month, which is a ton. And my guess is that this is when she started, you know, releasing the the murder mystery slash makeup content, or whatever, um, or or whatever. It might not be exactly uh murder mystery and makeup because sometimes she just sits in front of a camera and tells stories uh like dark stories about historic events that happened that were really bad um and she displays a lot of her personality and stuff in those videos but uh you know i think she figured it out she kind of figured out a new genre at that point that her audience really loved and i bet at that time too those those new videos the watch time i bet just did way better so the YouTube algorithm started promoting them out as suggested because if you look at her titles and stuff, her titles are not like really SEO based, right? They're not like people are searching for some random uh, murder from many years ago and all of a sudden it's getting, you know, 10 million views on the video. People are not searching that. It's YouTube, the algorithm, promoting it out under suggested on the homepage, uh, you know, on the sidebar. After a, a video finishes playing, they'll autoplay the next video. Um, and they're promoting these videos because they're saying, hey, look, people that click on this video, they watch it all the way through and they watch multiple ads. So this is a great video. People like it and, and they promote it. So, I mean, she's got to be super excited with where her career is now on YouTube. She's, you know, I'm my guess. She's a full time YouTuber making, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars each year off of her channel and probably getting approached all the time for brand deals and she probably has a manager. She's probably talking with her manager. Okay, you know, how do we turn this into a real business, right? A multi seven figure business because she can. I mean, with the type of views she's doing, she could be, uh, you know, this business could be doing well over a million dollars a year um, for her. So it's just up to her to kind of figure that out. Definitely. And every single one of her videos, at least the recent ones, has a sponsorship on it. So whether nice. that's HelloFresh or... Um, Simply Safe, or uh, I mean, just all kinds of sponsors, and she's she's pulling it in, and you know they're reasonably close to the beginning of the videos, which always helps. Uh, you you tend to get paid more for that, and it's 
good to see that she's really utilizing her views that she's pulling in here. I mean, it would be silly not to have sponsors. And um, one thing I thought was interesting is, so she releases about twice a week right now, which is a feat considering her videos are anywhere from like 30 minutes to over an hour. Wow. And I mean, releasing twice a week with that length of video is ridiculous. But uh, the way she's able to do this is she does have a team behind her. So huh. if you look in her description, she has like credits. And uh, so she has a small team of writers and producers, and she definitely has people helping her uh, with the sponsorships. She probably has an agent or something. Um, and so, you know, like uh, it, we were talking a bit earlier about what caused her big spike exactly. Uh, and like the, the obvious answer is her makeup, murder, and dark history content. But uh, I believe she started that in January of 2019 and she didn't super pick up until uh that was May of 2020 or so uh, I believe that's when she started ramping up her amount of videos that she was putting out uh so having this team behind her definitely helps um I don't know how big her team was before but I'm guessing it expanded uh or they're working more hours um, basically the point is when you have something that's working, uh, and you have figured out the, the secret formula, you know, you got your recipe, you know how to make these videos, uh, all you need is a topic and some people to put in the hours to make the video happen. Uh, that's the time to really start pumping things out and to, to start blowing up. Uh, and that's exactly what she did. Uh, I think it took her a few months to really figure out how to make a lot of this content uh but once she did she exploded and i'm i'm proud of her like this is <laughs> she she's doing everything right you know usually we'll look at these channels and there's one or two things that they're missing or like they could be releasing more often or uh they're not they don't have enough sponsorships even though they have a lot of views and i mean she's just as far as monetizing and uh engaging with her audience and like everything like she's she's doing it all right um this is this is a picture perfect youtube channel in my opinion yeah and, and the crazy thing is you you mentioned uh her videos are a little on the longer side and Whoa, I'm looking at some that are 52 minutes, 50 minutes, 57 minutes, 59 minutes, you know, 52 minutes. These are super long videos and they're well done. Like they're uh, maybe scripted. I, you know, they're very, um, yeah, they are. I, I, maybe not word for word scripted. Maybe they are. But, um, you know, there's there's a lot of personality. There's a lot of, a lot of jokes are hitting and and they're super long. So, I mean, imagine a, a 60 minute scripted video uh, that takes a ton of work to do. And as, as her channel, I'm scrolling through some of her old, old, old videos. Now I'm, I'm down into, you know, four years ago, three years ago. And yeah, at that point, she was not doing any murder mystery content at all. This was uh, Selena Gomez makeup tutorial, uh, green hair tutorial. Uh, these aren't the exact titles, but pastel makeup tutorial. And, you know, this 14 minutes, nine minutes, nine minutes, seven minutes. You know, so there is a little bit of proof in the pudding, you guys, if you're watching this and you're thinking, you know, should I should I uh, create longer content? Well, the answer is yes, if you can pull it off and keep people engaged. Obviously, you don't want to just add a bunch of fluff. We always say that that's not going to help you. Um, but putting more effort into your video and making it longer by adding more value into the video is is going to help you. And, you know, I, I can't get over this idea of of. The, the, the mixing of genres. I, I think this is a really good idea. And, and like, if you're listening to this right now and whatever kind of content you create, it's like, well, how can you mix another genre? So think about your avatar. Think about the dream viewer or the, the most common people that are viewing your video. So let's take it back to basketball, my basketball channel. These are, you know, 16 to 25 year old males who uh, want to get better at basketball. They probably love the NBA. They love college basketball. They love um, that kind of stuff. So how can I create a tutorial that is also going to be not just a five minute tutorial, which is part of my downfall because all my videos are like two minutes long, uh, some of them, many of them. So how can I introduce some storytelling uh, along with the, the actual tutorial? Well, 
What if I told a story about the time that Allen Iverson crossed over Michael Jordan and hit the jumper in his face? And I tell this very interesting story that would engage users and then teach them the move that he actually used as well. So there's an idea. Now I can take my content and I can, you know, extend it to 20 minutes. Now I can create an engaging 20 minute video to where if I was just standing there talking on camera for 20 minutes about how to do this move, I mean, people would click away. It'd be boring. So think about your content that you create. Think about how you can introduce storytelling in a way that your viewers would enjoy and just test it out. You know, throw up a couple videos like that, see how they do. If they do well, then you might be onto something. Totally. And like even just looking back at my YouTube career, I think one of the reasons that my channel Treesicle was successful was because I, we did kind of merge genres. So mm. for those who don't know, Treesicle is a video game channel. And the series that originally did very well for us was called The Story You Never Knew. And it was a, a it and still is a philosophical take on video games, essentially. Like our, our first video was on Samus from Metroid uh, being the bridge between all forms of consciousness in the universe. And, you know, it's a very abstract, strange idea for a video, but it did very well. The, it's currently sitting at over a couple million views. And usually there, there were philosophy channels and there were video game channels. But at the time, I believe this was in 2014, uh, there weren't really any video game philosophy channels. So by combining those uh, with some, you know, ridiculous humor and, and whatnot, uh, it, it worked very well. So, uh, and at least for me, like it was, it wasn't really... I, I didn't think about this consciously. I wasn't like, oh, we should combine philosophy and video games and this, mm -hmm. this will pull in big numbers. It was more, uh, I liked philosophy, I liked video games, and I thought, oh, this sounds interesting. You know, I, I think it's like, if you're looking for validation for an idea in your head and you can think like, oh, is this combining genres right now? Um, if the answer is yes, then that idea might be pretty good. Just saying. Yeah, so I, I, this has clearly worked for me. Uh, it's working for Bailey. It's uh, something to, to keep in mind for all of you potential and thriving YouTubers out there. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and you know, one other thing I'll say that she does well is she, uh, you know, she has like a little studio set up. So she has like this couch, it looks really nice. Um, and my guess is that the camera doesn't move. The camera stays there. The, the set stays there. So as far as the script writing and all that kind of process goes, that's that's a whole process. But when it's time to record, you know, she's probably just sitting down, turning on the camera, hitting record, taking a deep breath and then, you know, executing her lines, messing up 100 times, but uh, eventually getting through that script. And, you know, one to two hours later, she has an hour long video that didn't take any setup to do except for, you know, the script writing, which I'm sure she has help with that. Um, and, and that's probably a way she's able to like systematically pump out these incredible videos that, you know, she, where she's probably just the talent, uh, who jumps on camera and then she either has a partner or maybe she has like a, you know, somebody that works with her for the script. Um, or she, she writes it herself, does all the research. I don't want to take anything from her, but, um, you know, she's pretty big time at this point. She's, you know, she's closing in on a billion views. And that, that's the number. Like, if you ever get to a billion views, like, that's, like, mind-boggling to me. Because, like, th there's only so many people on this planet. And, like, you're reaching, like, a like not a majority at that point, but you're reaching, uh, uh, it's not, you've made a big dent, let's just say, at that point. Um, so that's why I'm just saying she probably has a script writer and all that kind of stuff. Um, and, you know, a researcher. There's a lot of research that goes into her videos. Um, but the cool thing, like I said, is she has her little set. She's able to hit record. Her footage looks great. Um, her her mannerisms, her personality, I think, is something where she understands, hey, I'm not just someone, you know, talking on camera. I have to, you know, have a, I have to act, right? I have to, like, bring it. I can't just hit record and act like I'm talking to my grandma at dinner. When I hit record, I'm on. I'm a personality, you know, I'm an influencer. And because she understands that, she just comes some comes across on her videos like very like polished and professional. And and you know, I was reading through some of her comments. She's got some great comments and some some really good fans. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, for real. And I did want to comment on her editing and how simple it is. And yeah. I, I think that's part of the reason this works so well. Uh, it, like, editing is not her bottleneck in this case. Um, you know, it probably doesn't take that long to just cut out all of the failed takes and, you know, scrunch the video together. She doesn't even have background music, you <laughs> know? Like, it's these are very simple videos. Uh, and she also, so she uploads to... Apple Podcasts and Spotify as well. Oh wow! And uh, I think that's part of her success too, because because her editing is so simple, you don't really need a visual to go along with it. Like it helps. Uh, she is doing makeup, and and that's cool to watch, and it's good to see her, you know, body language and gestures. But you don't have to, especially because her her voice too, like her her presentation. Uh, in front of the camera, in front of the microphone, is, like, it's well done. It's in entertaining. It's interesting. Uh, so even with just her voice, it's enough to keep people uh, getting that feeling of, like, oh, this is, like, a murder mystery, but it's also kind of casual. And it's, um, like, I don't need to get too stressed about this. I can just learn something um, and not feel like I'm going to be awake all night in fear. Uh, <laughs> you know, so I, I think this, this speaks to the importance of having a good camera presence, uh, or at least the power of it, because if you can be entertaining in front of a camera, then you can put most of your work into just writing, you know, like she, mm -hmm. she definitely goes off script a bit. Uh, like they absolutely have a script, but she definitely adds in little like jokes that she thinks of and just kind of little quips here and there and uh funny funny things and it's you know um i think that's a good move it it is scripted enough to where like there's a cohesive story that she can always stick to but then she'll kind of you know break the fourth wall every once in a while and keep you entertained keep you surprised keep you laughing keep you feeling like there's a real person talking to you right now um and yeah i just you know, if you're trying to make it on YouTube, I, I can't stress enough how important it is to just feel comfortable in front of a camera and how yeah. much work that will save you and how much success it can bring you. Yeah. And as far as her editing goes, she does one thing that I really like. It's pretty common on YouTube, but not, not a lot of people know about a lot of people know about, it, but maybe you don't. And what she does is she records in 4K. So when you record in 4K, that's a lot larger of a screen size that you can play your video on. Um, and if you release at 1080p, well, then you can do what she does, which is she crops in. So she'll be talking, 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 and then she might say something dramatic. And it looks like almost like she has multiple cameras because all of a sudden when she says something, it's going to crop in close on her face. She's going to deliver the lines and then it crop might crop back out, um, almost like a zoom in effect. And so if you record in 4K, you can do that. And when you crop in, you don't lose any quality um, of your picture. So it's 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 pretty good uh, effect. It's super simple one, um, but really powerful when it comes to talking head videos, just to make them look more engaging. Uh, you know, it's like, well, what am I supposed to do for a talking head video? Well, there's a few things that you can do in the edit to improve it. One would be crop ins, crop outs. The other one would be like um, full screen titles, right? So I'm just talking right now, and then all of a sudden there's a full screen cover your full screens covered there's some text it's a little bit of a title for the next part that's um, engaging you can also use b-roll right b-roll above your your footage uh, if you're doing a talking head if you're talking about you know a walk in the park you can show a clip of somebody walking in the park um, but these are all just just little small things you can do to improve your talking head and, and those crop-ins that she uses are, are pretty effective mm -hmm, definitely like it's super simple and still keeps attention and still only needs one camera. So yeah, props to her. Like the, this is how you do it. Um, so I now wanted to touch on her merchandise. So we talked about her sponsorships. We talked about, uh, I mean, she obviously has YouTube ads, uh, but she has her own website, baileysarian.com. And it's mostly clothing. Uh, and it's all, like, it has that kind of murder mystery, dark history vibe. She even has shirts that are part of the dark history collection. Uh, but yeah, her, her line is called Suspish, um, at least one of her lines. And it, it definitely matches the vibe that she goes for. 
and I, I'm sure she makes a good amount of money off this. Um, I was not able to find any specific numbers, but uh, again, as far as her doing everything right, I mean, you know, uh, I, sponsorships are great, highly recommend them, but selling your own stuff, especially when you have a popular personality like she does, uh, this is the way to go because you're going to be getting 100% of the revenue or at least a much higher percentage and it's passive income right you don't have to have a new sponsor every week you just kind of leave it up have the link in the description people remember the name of your clothing line uh they'll kind of just trickle in and buy it when they feel like it uh, instead of you constantly having to try and make it uh more and more popular you know it's just this is this is the way to go this is kind of the youtuber end game um and i'm i'm happy to see that she is doing well here yeah, and you know, if anybody's out there and you're like, you know, I wanna, I wanna have some merch someday, uh, I recommend that you use like a service so that you don't have to worry about any of the packaging, any of the shipping. Um, you can kind of just have the storefront. You can send traffic there from you know your your presence, your YouTube channel. Um, people go there, they buy. The money goes, you know, a percentage goes into your account. You know, it's all hands free. You don't have to do anything on your end except for you know come up with the designs and stuff. Um, and the other end completes all the fulfillment, right? They take care of everything. If there's some, if there's a refund, you can just click on a button on your screen. Okay. Give them a refund. Boom. It would go back to the, to the, to the store, not to you. Uh, the money would automatically go back in their account and it'd be pretty hands off. And, you know, I'm looking at, uh, her, you know, how does she do this? What kind of store is this? And it looks like she's using something called fan joy. So I don't know what kind of cut they take or what they even really offer, but, um, fan joy, basically is set up to help creators sell merch and come up with merch and design merch. Um, I'm looking, it says like merch madness on their, on their website right here. Um, so, you know, I'll, let me go and click on the creators tab and I'll look a little bit deeper into this. Yeah. And so th there's a list here of all the different creators that use FanJoy. Uh, and I'm looking at Addison Ray. I recognize that name. Um, well, there's a lot. There's a lot here. There's a long list. And I'm sure her name's on this list too because she's just as big as, as all these other ones. So uh, fanjoy.co for anybody that's interested in, in checking it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for real. It's, uh, I've heard good things about the service and uh, you know the website of hers feels super smooth and uh, clearly it works. Would, would highly recommend it. Uh, so another thing I wanted to talk about is this idea of her pivoting so she started out with makeup tutorials um and not not just tutorials but like makeup and vlogs and kind of personal life stuff uh and it was doing well for her but she changed her plan as we talked about and it did super well i think changing your plan on youtube can be super scary right uh, like we, we talk about having a plan on this podcast and sticking to it and being consistent, but sometimes it clearly is helpful to change the plan. So how do you know when is a good idea to change a plan? So Augie, uh, if, if you were in her situation, uh, before she released her new, uh, makeup murder, dark history type videos, uh, how would you like advise her to take the the next steps in changing her channel? Um, like how how would you mitigate risk while maximizing the odds of of success, or just in general, not even just for her? Yeah, a lot of different ways to go about it. I think um, the first time when you say, "Hey, I might consider changing up my style a little bit or my content type," is when you hit a plateau, right? When you're like one year straight same number of views every month or even less, right? A lot of times they'll start going down. Um, as you continue to release content, you're like, man, I'm not growing anymore. Well, that might be a sign right there that, hey, you need to pivot a little bit, maybe uh, change it up. And so how do you do that? How do you know what to do? Well, you have an audience, right? So survey that audience, um, ask them if, 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 you know, if your audience is on your email list, you could send them to like a survey monkey, which is just a, a service that allows you to take surveys and just collect data and ask the right questions. And, and you'll, you'll, you'll get a hint from your audience on what you should try, at least just try. Right. And, you know, at the end of videos, a lot of times, um, 
you know, you don't know what to say at the end of the video. You ask people to subscribe. You might ask them to watch another video, leave a comment. But what I recommend is, is always ask them, hey, this is, a, this is a channel by the people for the people. We want to create stuff for you. Leave a comment below and let us know what other kind of videos you'd like to see. And if you do that enough and just kind of pay attention to the comments, you'll start to see like a trend of certain types of videos that your audience wants. Um, maybe, maybe they are the same kind that you, that you, that you have currently going on. So that's not going to help you. But if you ask in a way like, Hey, if I was to create a different, if you wanted to hear something different than basketball training tutorials from me, what would you want to hear? Uh, and some people might say, oh, we'd love to hear uh, stories about when you played in college or we'd love to hear about your high school days or we'd love to hear about, you know, these other things that are related but not fully related. Um, that might be a new idea. Like I always thought like, hey, my basketball cha training channel probably could have turned or probably could have included at least like sneaker reviews, right? Like basketball shoe reviews or, um, you know, there's huge channels out there. One's called Kick Genius where they just talk about shoes and they do reviews and they do them well. Um, you know, that's the type of content I probably could have pivoted to. Um, and so for anyone out there, start thinking about, you know, how can I either add a second genre into exactly what I'm doing right now? I don't need to change much, but um, by adding this other one, it'll make it more interesting, more engaging and allow me to create longer content. Um, that's one way or just totally different types of content. Go from basketball training to shoe review and just test it out. And it's not gonna hurt your channel. Uh, when you test it, just notice, does, does it help? And if it does help, then you know that it's time to, to make that change. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and like part, part of the scariness comes from, I think like uh, this feeling of needing to commit, but you can take this one step at a time. As you said, yeah. you can test it out. You release one new type of video, see how people respond. Um, like. You mentioned taking surveys of your audience. I think that's a great idea. Um, however, I think it was like Steve Jobs who said something to the effect of uh, you got to show people what they want. Uh, you, you can't just ask them. Uh, you can ask them, but I think it, it can be oddly more effective to just kind of show them like, hey, this is this is my new type of video. What do you think? Uh, you just send it out into the world. You're going to get comments. They're going to tell you what they think. Uh, and I, I think also when you conceptualize something, like I, I've had plenty of ideas. I'm like, well, this is a great idea. And I'll like share it with a friend before I like have the idea fully formed or, or whatever. And uh, I think that version of the idea can sometimes be less appealing than the final completed version. So if you actually make the video and release it, as opposed to just kind of like um, asking your audience, because maybe your audience on the survey will say they aren't interested, but actually they would be if you had mm -hmm. just released the video, you know? Um, so it's, uh, yeah, uh, you can take things step by step. You don't have to 100%, 1,000% fully commit forever for the rest of eternity. Uh, just give it a try. Give it a try. And in this case, it worked great for her. Yeah. And from, from my understanding, you know, YouTube looks at your videos on a video by video basis. What I mean by that is, you know, like for my channel, like I haven't uploaded in years. If I went and uploaded a video, people are like, well, you know, your channel is probably dead. Well, guess what? If I went and uploaded a video and it was, let's say, just say 10 minutes long and people watched eight minutes, YouTube would promote it. They would because they're going to say, hey, this is a good video. Um, anybody that's watching uh, NBA highlights on here, let's promote it to them. You know, they might be interested. They might, we might get that click. Um, so the reason I'm saying that is because you don't know, you know, you might be one video away from a major breakthrough where you release some different type of content. It's 10 minutes long. Normally your, your videos are all five minutes. This one's 10 minutes and you're getting tons of watch time. And that's gonna be the start of that little uphill climb that we saw uh, with this channel. Uh, where she, you know she started releasing this different type of content, and she's like just some some pretty good YouTuber getting three million views a month, doing solid, to some all star superstar, multi millionaire now, all because she took that risk, made that video, it did well, and she just stuck with it. And now look at her; she's going to be hitting a billion views probably within within the next year for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's uh, uh, dang it. 
thanks Julius for editing this awkward part out uh, <laughs> but yeah th this has been great uh, I'm trying to think I'm like looking at anything else we could talk about here um bailey yeah. i think, I think we hit everything close. i feel like we've kind of hit everything yeah i think so we've really knocked on this one idea about the uh different genre maybe um income generating uh, yeah. i think oh the so one thing that i saw on the blog that was interesting tap into emotionally charged content um there's definitely emotions behind the murder mist. Let's go with that. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Um, uh, okay. How to transition. That all sounds great. And one other thing I wanted to touch on is this idea of taking emotionally charged content and making it feel more approachable, more casual, less dismal. Uh, you know, I, I think there's other things besides murder mysteries that uh, could could perhaps use this treatment. So, Augie, can you think of any other sort of dark, twisted, real-life events that, uh, not even events, but just ideas that maybe could use a more casual, relaxed spin so that people can understand them without getting super bummed out? Yeah, as, as, as far as that goes... Um... That's a tough one, but you know, people watch the news because they want drama, right? So you're talking about like emotionally charged. So not not just like negative emotionally charged content, but positively charged, uh, positively emotionally charged content could work, you know, like motivational type videos. Anything that can get the emotions going of the viewer is powerful. Like that's what makes video so powerful. Like, you know, we could, we, we cry during movies, we laugh during movies, we get scared during movies. Um, and your YouTube videos can be just the same way, same, same thing. Right. I mean, so, um, maybe not, you know, maybe you're not in the, in this horror, scary murder mystery type content, but you know, it just, it's a good kind of exercise to do is how can my content evoke emotion? How can it inspire somebody with the words that I'm saying? How can it scare somebody kind of more, um, what she's going for or more just like it's interesting, um, type content because that's going to keep that engagement, right? That's going to keep people watching. It just makes the videos better. I mean, we keep talking about the algorithm and, and watch time and all this kind of stuff, but like the algorithm really just is set up for people to enjoy videos, right? They want to promote videos that to people that will enjoy them. And that's really all it comes down to. So if you want to just forget about the algorithm, if you want to forget about all that kind of stuff, that's fine. But your videos have to be good and they have to inv evoke some sort of emotion. And it could just be like the emotion of like companionship type emotion, right? Like some people, you know, watch certain YouTubers just because they relate to them and they connect with them. And after they watch a video, they feel good, right? They feel good about themselves. So they feel good about the day. They feel, you know, motivated about something. And th that there it goes, you know, do you create educational tutorial content? Great. But are you really evoking emotion and are you connecting with your audience? Are you giving them a reason to click on your video besides just the, the, the tutorial? Because they're honestly like they could read a blog post. They could do a Google search. They could, there's so much like informational content out there. But the cool thing about video and YouTube is that you can connect with them on like more of a one-to-one -one basis on a person to person basis and build that community and all that kind of stuff. And if you're not doing that, then my recommendation is that you just start looking for ways to do that. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And uh, one, one thing I also thought was interesting with her channel is, uh, excuse me, uh, usually when people try to branch out into new content, they'll like make a second channel and they'll right. dedicate that channel to this new stuff. She did not do that, but it worked out super well. Uh, I'm curious as to... Like, I probably, if I was consulting with her, would have recommended she released this new type of video, see how it does on her channel, and then sort of pitch a new channel based on how well that video did, and then dedicate that second channel to this new content. She did not do that, but it worked out super well. Um, I, I'm guessing the reason for this is it was close enough and somehow her audience that was already there happened to just love murder mysteries. I mean, this is kind of a, a like, 
an exception to the rule, you know? Like, it's, it's generally good practice to, to separate channels because, you know, not everybody who likes video games likes ASMR. Not everybody who likes whatever likes whatever. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I just wanted to comment on how weird this is. Um, this is super uncommon where people usually somebody makes a new channel and that's that's the channel that gets big um i don't know like why why do you think this happened this way augie yeah and you know what you said is is just right and i would agree with that like normally you would want if the content's different you would start another channel for that because um you know my example with my basketball training channels all all my videos were tutorials right i was creating tutorials in the gym this is how you do this this is how you do this people loved it at some point I started creating vlogs more like day in the life. They were still 100% basketball related, but they just did not do well because people were on my channel for the tutorials. They didn't want a vlog. Um, and so like, that's, that's how I saw it um, in my own experience, but just with other people too, I think for her, the reason that she kind of pulled it off is the same thing that we talked about at the beginning of the episode, right? My wife, what does she love? Well, she loves makeup and murder mysteries. <laughs> like literally, like these are two things that she does love. Like it, out of the out of the ten things she loves, these these take up two of the spots, you know. So, um, you know, she just she finessed it in a way that you know both these, uh, you know, now you can get you get what you came for, right? The makeup, uh, but you're also getting this murder mystery alongside of it that is is entertaining and keeping me watching. So I think it's because she knew her viewer. Right. She knew she didn't say, all right, today I'm going to start a new type of video. I'm going to create makeup tutorials while teaching people how to change their gas or teaching people how to or change their oil, you know, or teaching people how to. I don't know. What's another another just totally off topic thing that makeup uh, gurus would not like. She, She knew her viewer. She knew like, hey, most women really dig these things. I'm noticing that, um, you know my my viewers are this age to this age these kind of people like murder mysteries as well and maybe it was 100% intentional right imagine that if 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 it was if she was 100% intentional on the fact that like just got to keep thinking I'm, it's been a few days I'm I'm continuing to think what how can I incorporate a new type of of content on my channel and she eventually landed on that then she's genius she's one of the all-time greats because because she went like I said she literally is a superstar now She's a multimillionaire now, all because of this small pivot that she did to blow up her channel. So I think for any listener or viewer right now watching this, like you can do it. You are so close. Look at her. She she after years and years. Yes, it's, she's got 444 videos. That's a lot of videos. Um, but after all that time, you know, she found the winning formula and she's just going to ride this this winning formula off into the sunset and uh, be one of the biggest, biggest channels there is. Amen. Yeah. <clears throat> all right. Now I'm thinking we'll just jump into the conclusion. Yep. <clears throat> Clear my throat first. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. <clears> oh, <throat> all right. Here we go. Bailey Sarian has made the big brain move to take two massive genres and shove them together. You can't just do this with any genres, however. Makeup and murder mysteries have a surprising amount of crossover in terms of demographics, so this was a great move just waiting to happen. Between her frequent releases of twice a week, I'm gonna redo that. Between her frequent releases of twice a week, her constant sponsorships, her merchandise, her posting to many platforms, Bailey Sarian is killing it. Pun very much intended.